You know what Leonardo da Vinci and Nikola Tesla had in common? They refused to let one side of their brain dominate the other. Da Vinci could draw with one hand while writing with the other. Tesla trained himself to be ambidextrous. But here's what's really fascinating. It wasn't just talent. It was deliberate brain restructuring. And the best part? You don't need to be a genius to start. You just need to change which hand holds your toothbrush. By the end of this video, you'll understand why forcing yourself to be clumsy might be the smartest thing you ever do. Part 1. The Immediate Brain Response When you use your left hand, if you're right-handed, your brain goes into what I call emergency mode. It has to wake up regions that normally stay dormant. MIT researchers found that the corpus callosum, the bridge between your two brain hemispheres, increases its activity by 40% after just two weeks of non-dominant hand use. Now here's the uncomfortable truth. That feeling of being clumsy, slow, frustrated, that's actually the sign your brain is growing. It's exactly like going to the gym. The discomfort is the growth. You know that mental friction when you try to write with your left hand? That awkwardness you feel? That is literally the sensation of your brain waking up. Your prefrontal cortex has to be 60% more alert compared to when you're running on autopilot. There's a fascinating example from Japan. They have a tradition of teaching children to write with both hands. The result? A 25% increase in their ability to solve complex problems not because two hands are better than one, but because their brains learn to work harder. Part 2. The Neuroplasticity Explosion So what's actually happening inside your brain? This is where neuroplasticity comes in, your brain's ability to create new neural connections. Here's what makes this powerful. When you struggle with your non-dominant hand, your brain starts building myelin, a protective layer around neural pathways that makes signals travel faster. Think of it like upgrading from copper wires to fiber optic cables. You're literally upgrading your brain's hardware by forcing it to struggle. A Stanford study showed that using your non-dominant hand triggers the birth of new neurons, a process called neurogenesis, specifically in the hippocampus, your brain's memory center. It's similar to learning a new language, but it happens faster. Think of it as cross-training for your brain. Your right hemisphere, responsible for creativity, and your left hemisphere, handling logic, have to cooperate more intensely. Research from multiple universities, including Harvard and Yale, found this improves what's called divergent thinking, your ability to find multiple solutions to a single problem. This is why ambidextrous people often excel in both arts and sciences. Here's what makes this even more powerful. Neuroscientists at Oxford discovered that this myelin formation doesn't just happen in the motor cortex. It spreads to adjacent regions responsible for decision-making and abstract thinking. So when you're fumbling with a fork in your left hand, you're not just training coordination, you're upgrading the very circuits that help you think through complex problems at work or in relationships. Part 3. The Genius Connection Don't believe me? Let's test your brain right now. Pause for a second. Try to snap your fingers with your non-dominant hand. Go ahead. Awkward, right? That awkwardness you're feeling? That's not just physical clumsiness. That's your brain hitting a wall and being forced to climb over it in real time. That struggle is not a bug. It's the feature. Now, Let's talk about why this struggle creates genius. Yale Neuroscience discovered something remarkable. Using your left hand forces your brain to re-examine patterns it's already learned. The result? You get better at recognizing new patterns in complex situations. Your brain stops relying on shortcuts and starts actually seeing. This is where creative problem solving gets a massive boost. When you do a familiar task with your non-dominant hand, your brain has to rethink the entire process. This is how Picasso and Michelangelo trained their visual spatial intelligence. They didn't just paint, they forced their brains to see differently. 
Benjamin Franklin explicitly practiced writing with his non-dominant hand because he understood it balanced his thinking. He didn't rely on natural talent. He forced his brain to adapt. And here's something that surprised even the researchers. A Cambridge study found that writing with your non-dominant hand improves working memory by 18%. Why? Because your brain has to be conscious of every single movement. That creates what neuroscientists call deeper encoding. Einstein once said, The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. And that's exactly what this practice cultivates. Forcing brain discomfort forces imagination to grow. Think about it. When was the last time you felt genuinely challenged by something as simple as picking up a cup? That novelty? That struggle? Is exactly what keeps your brain young and adaptable. Part 4. How to actually do this. Alright, so how do you actually implement this without losing your mind? First rule. Start stupidly small. Don't try to write an essay with your left hand on day one. That's not training. That's torture. Start with what I call the non-dominant morning protocol. Brush your teeth with your other hand. Open doors. Hold the TV remote. These seem trivial, but they're not. Your brain is processing entirely new motor patterns. MIT developed what they call the 20-minute rule. 20 minutes a day, 5 days a week. This is enough to trigger neuroplasticity without causing the kind of frustration that makes you quit. Remember, you're not trying to become ambidextrous overnight. You're trying to force your brain out of autopilot. Here's a progressive challenge system. Week 1 and 2. Simple tasks, like brushing teeth or holding a spoon. Week 3 and 4. Write your name. Draw simple shapes. Week 5 and beyond. Write short sentences. Use your computer mouse with your non-dominant hand. But watch for warning signs. If you feel actual pain, stop. If you're getting so frustrated you want to throw something, reduce the time to 10 minutes. This is a marathon, not a sprint. The goal is consistent challenge, not overwhelming stress. Here's what most people miss. Using your left hand isn't really about ambidexterity. It's about forcing your brain out of autopilot. Genius isn't about being born smart. It's about knowing how to force your brain to grow. So here's your challenge. Today, brush your teeth with your non-dominant hand. Feel that awkwardness. That's the sound of neurons crying as they grow. In 30 days, your brain will be different. Not because of your left hand, but because you taught your brain how to learn how to learn again.